All right, so today we're gonna to be working on the W209. It is a 2003 and we're gonna be working on the stepper motors, which are basically uh, in control of all the airflow of the dashboard um, regarding face vents, windshield, feet, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this particular car has a very common problem where the vents are basically clicking um, because the original sockets that are in here are completely screwed up um, they're actually cracked from age, which is causing the motors to spin and the vents not to open, which in turn is causing a system error, which doesn't allow the air to switch directions and the car is stuck in one mode. Now that was a mouthful. So basically when you own one of these W209s, the best thing to do is to just toss the entire car in the trash and start over with something better. <laughs> but if you're in this situation where you can't do that, you have to fix it. So let me show you what we're talking about. So these are the gears that sit on the stepper motors. And as you can see, this is the original gear, which is completely split. It is pretty badly damaged. And what happens is, I don't know if I can reach, but when this gear is sitting on the motor with the split, it basically hops. It hops over the, the motor just like that. And it makes this horrendous clicking noise in your dash and nothing else happens. Oh, these ones. Um, now, there are two more motors which control the defrost. There's one here and there's one here. They have these little arm things and the exact same thing happens. Um, we've replaced these with metal already and they stop. So those are fixed, but now we're gonna be showing you how to fix that other terrible clicking noise in this car. And again, these cars are famous for doing this. So most people on the internet say it's the motors, replace the motors, blah, 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 we'll fix everything. What you do need to do instead is you need to order yourself a kit with all the hardware and it looks like that. There's a part number. They sell these at the dealership. It's $57 out the door, at least here in California. So it's not too bad for all, all the levers for the entire setup. Part number in description. That's the best way to, best place to put it. Yeah. Uh, that being said, so let me show you how the system works. It's pretty simple. It looks very intimidating, but it's actually pretty easy. So the first thing you want to do is once you pull the motors off and you pull the old gears off, which is self-explanatory, it's three screws that you're pulling out and the motor pops off. So you have one, two, three, one, two, three. When you pull those off, um, you will pull out these lower gears, the ones that are cracked. So just leave your motors hanging and then you should replace these upper gears because you're already in here. There's no reason not to. And the kit comes with these. So all you do is you pull on this gear and you just slowly turn it. And you'll notice that there's a point where it will just slide out. Now, the reason for that is, is because there's a key right here and that keyway is what guides this into the correct position with the flaps. Um, and this keyway only comes out when it's in a certain position. So same thing when you're installing, you simply put it in and you turn it and you will hit that one point where it will latch in. So just gently push while you turn, there it is. You gotta push it in some more, but there, you get the idea. So, it's, it's directional is what I'm saying, and it's keyed for you, so there's no way to do this wrong. Now, oh, and I'll show them the range of movement as you turn so I can show them the vent up here. Right, so you have closed, and then you have open. Now, I don't know exactly how far the stepper motor goes, but here, show them the top. So you have, this is closed, so this means that your face vents are not working at all, and then this is supposedly open, however, it could go further. I don't know right now. We'll find out the second we plug the motors in. And that's gonna be our next step. All right, so now that we have these upper gears installed properly and replaced, we're going to focus on installing the lower gears. Now this looks really intimidating and it somewhat is, but it's actually really easy to figure out how to position these. So let me show you how that's done. First things first is you want to point these things straight down and what I mean by that there's a little arrow right here and you know what I'm talking about when you see this in person this little tooth sticks out further than all the other teeth so what you want is you want that tooth pointing straight down and the other side same thing so I'm gonna spin it so it's pointing relatively straight down and that's the tooth I'm talking about I guess the little ball the little I wouldn't use the ball up here for alignment and the reason for that is is because it's not perfectly parallel to this tooth which means that, or it's not in line with this tooth, which means that um, using this for your alignment is probably not a good idea. I would just use the tooth down here. So that being said, 
now you have to figure out how to align this. If you know this, um, looking at this part, you'll see that there are two cutouts right here for a tooth. There's one here and there's one there. And it's as simple as putting the gear into this hole and then lining up that one tooth that sticks out with one of these cutouts. And again, you will either get this right or wrong. So you may have to do this twice. So for this side, it's this first tooth to the, to the left. And as you can see, I put the tooth in exactly where the cutout is. And now when you spin it, you can see that the flap opens and it stops. And then when you spin it in the other direction, you can see that the flap closes and it stops. So you got that right. So this is the correct alignment position because if you put it in the wrong way, what's gonna happen is essentially you'll spin this gear by hand and this gear will run out of the teeth and it will spin further than this gear and the engagement between the teeth will be broken. You don't want that. You want constant tooth engagement in order for this to operate correctly. So now we're gonna do this side and it's pretty much the same thing. So we're gonna grab our brand new piece, as you can see over here. And it's as simple as, once again, figuring out the teeth. So we're gonna, I'm gonna try it with this tooth right here. So if you spin it all the way here, you can see that the vents open and it doesn't wanna go any further. And then if we spin it all the way back, you can see that the vent is closed and it doesn't wanna go any further. So we know we got the alignment absolutely correct on both of these gears. And this is all ready to be reassembled. Go. All right, so now that we have our gear alignment all set up, we're going to be setting up our motors. So as you can see, our motors are already starting to spin. You can see them moving. They move very slowly, they're very smooth. Um, think of these uh, like radio control car motors, they're servos and they're proportional. So whatever position this motor is in, it will tell the car's computer what position it's in, if that makes any sense. So um, that being said, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna put your ignition on, which we clearly did over here and you don't want to start the car. If you want, you can start the car, but as you can see with everything disassembled, it's not necessary. Grab your HVAC panel, which is plugged in. Now, one step about this, or one thing to mention about the HVAC panel is you absolutely have to have this cable plugged in over here as well. This is the cable that basically sends power and data to all of these motors. Um, and then it takes basically, it sends power to the motors, but it also sends data back to this panel. If you don't have this plug, plugged in over here, then nothing will happen, period. So if nothing is happening, make sure this is plugged in. So that being said, um, here is our HVAC panel. It's set to zero. So we want to put it on low just so the fan is spinning. And what we want to do is we want to put everything to face. So as you can see the arrow here, we're basically taking it out of auto and we're putting it on face. Now you may ask why face? Because these are the face vents. So these vents, are actually the two that come out here and the two that come out to the driver and to the passenger. Now, um, the reason we're doing this is because we want to get the alignment correct between the motors and the gears. So by doing this, we know that these motors are going to turn themselves into the correct position for face. And the only thing we have to do now is make sure that the vents are open for face. It's pretty simple, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually spin these vents open into approximately where I think they should be with the, with the stepper motors um, in the position for open. So now that I've spun these, what we wanna do is we basically wanna start aligning the stepper motors and getting them into position correctly. So we know that these are set for face. So it's as simple as putting the stepper motor in to this hole right here and then turning the motor so that it, it fits into the screw, screw post of where it belongs. Um, so it, it sounds difficult, but it's really not. Just just bear with me. So with this fully opened up 100%, that's that's as far as it's going to go. We're going to plop this the motor in as straight as we possibly can. So about here. And as you can see, this vent is pretty much open and the motor is exactly in the correct position of where it should be for fully open. So next step, it is as simple as grabbing the screws, grabbing yourself a T20. These are all T20 screws, by the way. And we're gonna start bolting the motor back in. Now, this is a little bit tedious and a little bit flexible because these motors do have rubber bushings on them. So they do kind of tend to move around just a little bit. As you can see, even though it's bolted down, everything moves. Um, don't be concerned about that. It really, it's just the way this is designed, so it's not a big deal. So 
we're going to bolt this motor in all three screws and it might have a little bit of a difficulty reaching this last one but we yeah, got it that one's not too bad only when the dash is in the car <laughs> okay so gotta close the door because somebody just parked beside us but it's all good so um same thing for this side so we're going to open this up to maximum so this is max as you can see the gear set only moves as far as it moves it doesn't go any further so let's move it to max and then we're going to grab our stepper motor and this one sits slightly different position but it's basically the same thing um we basically insert it in and then lightly twist the motor so that it aligns with the pins and it did so next step is putting in the screws that hold this motor in place like so so we'll just start with one and we'll run this one down all the way and then we're gonna go on for the remaining two screws like so now you don't want to over tighten these either you want to just do them hand tight because there are rubber bushings in here and if you over tighten them you're going to tear right through those rubber bushings so they have to be tight but they don't have to be torqued down there's no you know um when working with plastics always take that as a rule of thumb tighten things so they're tight but don't torque on them because you will break stuff off and that's just like the rule of plastic anyways that being said motors are installed gear alignment is correct vents are open um, the next step that we're going to be doing is we're basically going to be showing you a test for the hvac system um, and how everything moves in here as well as the positioning of all the motors so stay tuned all right so in this part of the video we're going to be showing you where all the stepper motors are in this dashboard of this convoluted mess of a car now there are a lot of motors in here and some of them are very difficult to reach but uh, we're going to be pointing them out to you we're not going to be replacing all of them now here's the thing a lot of forums for mercedes say that these motors all die and you need to replace all of them as we've disassembled this dashboard and we've been testing it turns out that that's not always the case in this particular example of a car we've only had one motor that was acting up and it was clicking after the metal arm you can see the metal arm over here after we replaced this arm the motor was still clicking and showing completely out of range on the scanner and out of all the motors that are in this car this is the only one that was broken so don't worry about buying all these motors and if you do buy these motors buy yourself a set of used ones that you can see over here yeah i because... bought a set of what was it a set of 12 for 85 dollars on ebay I went to the dealership. These they wanted to charge $171 each. I got 12 from a three years newer car for 85 bucks on eBay. So there you go. That's so the way to go. That being said, not all of these motors in this bag are probably working correctly. That being said, there's extras and there's more than enough to fix the entire car. So this is the way to go to fix this car. So moving on with the video, we're gonna be showing you where all the motors are. So let's get started. These are the two that we've shown you so far. So we have one and two. These control your face vents. So the two vents that come out here and then the vent here and the vent there. Now, next you have these two motors over here. These two control the defrost and they open basically these two right here, uh, shoot air into the windshield. Now you have another motor here and another motor right here. These two control these vents. Um, they're part of the defrost system as well. Next motor is right back here. Now, I have no idea how to reach this motor and I would assume that the service call for replacing this motor back here is to basically take out this entire structure for the dashboard, right. drop yeah. the steering wheel, and basically take out the whole HVAC system out of the car. I, I don't see any way of reaching this motor. It's, it's complete masochism and <laughs> it's not doable 
That being said, it is probably doable at the factory when the car is being made. No, okay, I want to interject. It is it is doable, but it does require dropping this whole metal beam. You drop the steering the steering beam first. It's not that bad. I mean, it is more work, but once you're here, it's it's not that bad. I mean, once you've done all this already. Once it's... you've done all of this, basically, you know, you, you're sitting here going, I should have just bought yeah. a different car in the first place. Right, and, mm -hmm. and I have said that so many times, but here we are. <laughs> but here we are. But here we are, and we've made serious <laughs> progress. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on we have another motor over here this motor controls this flap over here which is basically i believe that's the recirc flap I recirc think? flap so it either takes air from outside or it takes air from inside of the car this opens and closes um and then last but not least we have two more motors which are hidden over here and i'm going to do my best to point it out there's one here someplace on the lower part of the dash and then there's a corresponding one on the exact opposite side of the dash over here which you're not going to really be able to see but believe me it's in there luckily mine are working and we don't have to mess with those because i don't just those would just have to stay broken <laughs> so <laughs> all right so now that you've done all this work on your w209 and you've replaced all the broken gears you've replaced motors that weren't working the next important step to do before you go any further is to test the system. Now Mercedes has this nifty feature on this A-Track panel over here. And the feature basically allows you to, allows the system to do a self-test um, and, alignment. and alignment. So let me show you how that's done. You essentially push this button here and this button here. So the recirc and the front window defrost and you hold them down at the same time, like so. Holding, and you keep holding until both lights start flashing. So now when you see this flashing pattern, kind of like, you know, when you're waiting for a train. You know that the system is self-testing. And as you can see in the video, you can see all the motors moving, all the flaps moving. Now, the trick here is when this car wasn't operational, and by, what I mean by that is when the HVAC system in this car wasn't operational, these lights would continue flashing and they would not stop. It would just be flash, 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 flash. Um, and that was basically signifying that the system failed the test. But as you can see right now, they stopped flashing. So the car automatically goes onto, onto this, this button here because when you initiate the test, the car seems to think that you're putting on defrost. So ignore the fact that this light is on because it doesn't really mean anything. It's just the way the car thinks. But that being said, as you can see, the two lights are no longer flashing, which means that the car has successfully passed the HVAC test. And this particular 209 finally has a working HVAC system. 